so now we are having question two so the first part of question two which is 2.1.1 we are asked to find the fifth term so the quadratic uh, pattern here has four terms which is 1 9 25 and 49 so we are asked to find the other uh, number there so for us to find it you're just going to write your sequence 1 9 25 49 and then we don't know the next term so what you're going to do is you're going to find a difference between these given numbers so you're going to say 9 minus 1 you're going to get 8 25 minus 9 you're going to get 16 49 minus 25 you're going to get 24 and you know that okay this is going to be the first difference of your quadratic and your quadratic pattern your quadratic number pattern has a constant second difference so our second difference um, in this case is going to be 8 so we know that this 8 is just going to continue just like that so what you're going to do is you're going to add you're going to say okay fine um, 20, 20, 24 this 24 here plus this 8 is going to give me a sequence here a number of the sequence here which is 32 then this 32 you're going to add it with this 49 so you're going to say 49 plus 32 you're going to get a number here which is 81 so to get the next term you just do that how you say if you add this 25 and this 24 you're going to get 29 if you add this 9 and this 16 you're going to get 25 so that's how i found this 81 here i said 49 plus 32 gives me 81 so now we are solving 2.1.2 we say that we must show that the nth term of this sequence can be written as this follows so we are given the nth term but basically we need to calculate the nth term we need to find the nth term and prove that it is actually written like this so the first step we're going to do is we're going to still write our our sequence um, which is 1 9 25 and 49 and we found 81 in our 2.1.1 question so the first difference that we got here was 8 16 24 and 32 and the second difference that we got is 8 8 8 so um this second difference is equal to 2a second difference that's the first step that we need to do 2a is equal to 8 Divide by two both sides, our a is equal to 4. So that is the first one. Then 3a plus b is equal to the first term of the first difference. Not just any term, but the first term of the first difference. So we know our a is 4, so it's going to be 3 into 4 plus b is equal to. So what's the first term of our first difference? So this is our first difference. What is the first term? It is 8. So we're going to write that 8 there. Then you transpose this to the other side. Your b, you should get um, minus 4. That is going to be your b. Then to find your c, it's going to be a plus b plus c equals to the first term of your sequence. So you have your A, which we found as 4. You have your B, which is minus 4. Plus C is the cost. What is our first term? It's 1. That is our first term. So your C is going to be equal to 1 because these two will cancel out. So this, your C is going to be like this. So why are we finding A, B, and C? It's because this is a quadratic number pattern. And a standard form of a quadratic number pattern is given as Tn is equal to An squared plus b n plus c so which is a quadratic number pattern formula which you probably know the standard form in your parabola so we're going to substitute our a value our b value and our c value to find our um our equation right so let me just remove this so that you can write our equation properly so our equation is going to be, so Tn is equal to our A value we found to be 
4. So it's going to be 4n squared. Our b we found to be minus 4. It's going to be minus 4n. Our c is 1, so it's plus 1. But remember that we need to write it in this format. So for you to write it in this format, you need to factorize. So we're going to factorize this, and we're going to have 2n, 2n as factors of 4n squared, and then the factors of 1 is just 1. Then you're going to put a negative there. So you can see that it's 2n minus 1 both. So you can simply say 2n minus 1 and put a squared outside. So that is the solution of tn, which is basically the same as this one here. So that is how we solve 2.1.2. 2.1.3, we are asked to find the term of the sequence which is equals to 10201, which is 10201. So to find that term, we know the standard standard term, or should I say the formula of our quadratic pattern. 2n minus 1 all squared. That is the formula that we have. But we want to find n. We don't know n. Since we are given that tn is equal to 10, 201, 10,201. So you're going to write 10,000 here. 10,201, 10, 10,201 equals to 2n minus 1 all squared. It's like that. So we need to remove the squared. So you're going to put a square root, right? So you're going to put the square root there, square root there. Uh, then the solution from the square root, you're going to get 101 equals to 2n minus 1. Then you transpose the 1 to the other side, you're going to get 2n is equals to 101 plus 1, which is 2n is equals to 102. Divide by two both sides, you're going to get n being equal to 51. So that is going to be your solution of n. So now we're going to do 2.2, right? Um, in this question, we are told that the first 24 terms of the arithmetic series are these ones so we are given 24 terms even though they didn't write the entire 24 terms but you know that the first 24 terms will give us 35 all the way up to 196 so n is equal to 24 we know for this sequence here which this sequence if you check clearly the difference is 7 for this sequence so we know that d is equal to 7 the difference common difference is 7. You can minus, you can say 42 minus 35, you'll get 7. You can say 49 minus 42, you get 7. So the difference is 7. So now they say that you must calculate the sum of all natural numbers. So these are key. All natural numbers from 35 to 196 that are not divisible by 7. So when a question says this, it says that we want numbers that are not divisible. If something is not divisible by 7, which means you can't divide it with 7. So if I say 20 divided by 7, I cannot divide it by 7. Yes, it is going to um, be divided, but it will give me decimals. It will give me decimals. And you don't want that. We want a perfect number. So they're not divisible. So we want the sum of all natural numbers from 35 to 196. Remember that from 35 to 196, we have 24 terms that are not divisible by 7. So we want a sum which will give us natural numbers not divisible by 7. So the first thing you need to do here is to first find the sum of numbers that are divisible by 7. So you're going to look at your 35 plus 42 plus 49. So I'm, gonna, I'm writing this sequence here, plus 196. So you can see that the first three terms here are divisible by 7. So you can simply find the sum of this sequence. So sum, and since we're having a constant difference of 7, meaning our d is 7. 
So it's going to be, we're going to use this formula, n over 2 is equals to a plus l. l means last term. This means first term. And the n is number of terms. n means number of terms. Cool. So this is what you're going to do. So what is our n? We know that we're having 24 terms. We were told. And our a value is 35. a is the first term. This is 35. And our l, which is our last term, is equal to 196. So we were given the last term. So this, this sequence is finite. Is it has an end. So we have a last term of 196. So we're just going to substitute in this uh, equation here. So S of 24 is equal to 24 over 2 into uh, the first term, which is 35 plus 196. So the sum of this, you're going to get 2772. Right? So that is um, the solution for numbers that are divisible by 7. So the sum of 24 is equals to 2772. So this is for numbers divisible by 7. Remember that. These are for numbers divisible by 7. Cool. But we don't want numbers, a sum of numbers divisible by 7. We want numbers that are not divisible. We want a sum of numbers not divisible by 7. So there are numbers in between 35 to 196 that are not divisible by. For example, the sequence it says 35. What's the next number from 35? It's 36. So it's not divisible by 7. We want those numbers. We want a sum of those numbers. 36. 37, 38, 39, 40, up until 41. All these numbers are not divisible by 7. We want a sum of all these numbers, including the ones that are between here and between here. So we want those numbers. We want a sum of those numbers. Someone can just write these numbers. If you have time, you can just write all these numbers and add them together. That would be your answer. You will be allowed to get your five marks. If you have all the time, you can just do that. Just add all the numbers in between. That would be your sum. But um, just because we, we, we want to use our, our knowledge of sequence and series. So what you're going to do here, you're going to find the sum of natural numbers. So we know that, um, but for us to find the sum, we're going to still use the same equation n over 2 into a plus l, right? But the difference here is the number of terms. How do you find the number of terms of all the natural numbers that are between 35 and 196? So what you're going to do is you're going to say 196 minus 34. Why am I minusing 34? 35 is divisible by 7, right? And 35 is within um the range of numbers because we want numbers that are between 35 and 196 so 35 is inclusive in that count so i have to include it hence i'm using 34 which is less than 35 i want to include 35 as my terms because it's also a natural number you can also consider it as a natural number so um, when you subtract these two, you're going to get 162. So this is a total number of terms, of natural numbers, all the natural numbers in the sequence, all of them, including the ones that are divisible by 7. So we are just including everything. So you're going to find the sum for that. So you're going to say the sum of 162 natural numbers, 162 over 2 into what is the first term? The first term is 35. That's why I said inclusive, I subtracted 34. The first term is 35, even for natural numbers. Plus the last term, it's 196. So that didn't change. So if I write it properly, it's 162 
over 2 into 35 plus 196. Then um, your solution for this one, you're going to get 18,711. Please confirm with the calculator, but this is the answer. So now you have, let me write this proper now. Now you have um, a sum of 24 terms, which is equal to 2772. I said it's this one here for numbers that are... Um, numbers so this this is n0 it's numbers numbers that are divisible by seven right and then s of 162 is equals to 18711 it's a combination let me write it it's a combination of numbers that are divisible by seven and those not divisible by seven so there's a combination here combination in this one combination of those that are divisible by seven and those that are not divisible by seven but what do we want we want numbers that are not divisible by seven so we have to subtract from this larger sum because it consists of both those that are divisible by seven and those that are not. So sum of numbers that are not divisible by seven is equal to the sum of numbers that are that have a combination of both divisible and not divisible minus the sum of 24 which are divisible by seven. So meaning we're gonna say 18,711 minus 2772. Then you're going to get an answer of 15,939. So this is the answer for numbers that are not divisible by 7. So that is the sum. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, please write them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos.